Legacy of Kids. My name is Gabby and this is Michael. What are you doing? I'm trying to read Bruce's thoughts. Okay, and what is Bruce thinking? Well, he's thinking... He's thinking... Let me see, let me see. He's thinking he wants to go to the pool with his dad because it's Father's Day. Oh, well, Bruce, is he right? Yep, pool party with my pops. Michael, you can read minds? Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Bruce and I were just completely talking about that when you were walking in, about going to the pool with his dad. Michael, I knew it. You can't read people's minds. But that reminds me that today is Father's Day. You got that right. Now, this is a day to celebrate all the father figures in your life. Some father figures look different, like they could be your grandfather, mm -hmm. a coach, or even an uncle. Yep, you may have a dad or even a stepdad like me. Well, just make sure to take some time today and say thanks for being in my life. Pops, thanks for being in my life. I love you. Mm -hmm. We even have a cool virtual Father's Day kit that you can download and make a nice present for a father figure in your life. That sounds really cool, actually. <sighs> I guess it's fine. Michael, are you okay? No, I wish that Bruce and I could just like read each other's thoughts and we would know exactly what we're saying. And we wouldn't have to use words. <laughs> it's fine. Michael, but it's okay to talk things through with friends. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess we would have to use words like normal people and like normal llamas. There is nothing normal about a talking llama. <laughs> I but... guess you're right. Getting to know someone, that's what happens when you talk with them. So that's okay. In fact, that reminds me of our game that we're going to be playing today, which we played a few weeks ago called Did You Know? Oh, yes, I remember playing this game. It was with Ileana. Mm -hmm. So for this game, Gabby and I will ask three questions and we'll see if we can guess each other's answer. Oh, man. So you can play this at home too, kids. You'll just need some paper and a pen or if you have a mini marker board, you can use that too, and a teammate, but not like a dog, because, or like a pet, because they can't write, so like True. a human. True. Okay, here we go. All right, kids, so our first question for Did You Know is, would your teammate rather swim in a pool or swim at the beach? Okay, Let's I think see. I know the answer to that. I know yours for sure. Mm -hmm. I hope mm -hmm. I sp spell this correctly. Okay, I'm ready, are you? Uh, yeah, some of these and some of that. This isn't an art contest, some Michael. Of these. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Ta da! Cool. That's a palm tree, by the way. And that's you with goggles on. Because <laughs> you All like right. to swim at the pool. Yes. Yes, I do. Right. I don't like sharks. so. And I love the beach. I love to swim in the beach and the salt water. All right. Question number two. What is your teammate's favorite summer snack? Ready? Let's okay. Do it. If I draw it, do I get more points? Is that how this works? I don't know. I'm gonna have to write it in two words. Ooh, two words. I think, hmm. I wonder if we're gonna get it right. All okay. right. Three, two, one. Watermelon! Woo! Yes, that is correct. Mm-hmm, so right. refreshing and sweet. I want some watermelon right now. Yep, I'm sure Bruce would like some too. Okay, ready? I think for... he's thinking about this. Yep. Okay, our next question is, is your teammate more afraid of spiders or roaches? Oh my goodness, we, come on. I think come they're both equally terrifying. On. <laughs> okay, ready? Do they have two legs? I Michael's mean, still legs. doing an art contest. <laughs> on the count Sorry. of three. Three. Two, one. Ta-da! 
Yes, roaches. Roaches, the worst, this the disgusting worst. Disgusting roach. Ugh. Whatever you think that is, that is a roach. And I actually got bit by a spider once. What? And I'm not as scared of spiders as I am of roaches. Roaches fly. <sighs> Let's just say that. They're the they worst. They fly. Bugs are gross. Bugs are gross. Agreed. They're disgusting. But I get where you're going with it. Today's true Bible story, we meet this man. And Ananias heard the voice of the Lord tell him to go help a man named Saul. That is true. And now we talked about Saul last week. He was the one hurting and even killing anyone who believed in Jesus. Oh man, so you can imagine Ananias was afraid. This guy Saul was bad, bad news. And now Jesus wanted Ananias to help Saul. Saul was killing people like him, people who believed in Jesus. I know what you're thinking. No way, no way would I help this guy. Let's see what Ananias ended up doing, even when he was afraid. When you read the Bible, there's a guy that really stands out, a man named Paul. Paul was a missionary who wrote the books of Romans, Galatians, and many others in the Bible. But what's really incredible is Paul's story before he became a follower of Jesus. He was a very different person. His name wasn't even Paul. It was Saul, and he hated anyone who followed Jesus. Saul tried to do what was right by following the old laws, but he believed anyone who followed Jesus was wrong. So he chased down Christians and captured them. One day, Saul was given permission to go to a town called Damascus and arrest any followers of Jesus that he found there. But an incredible event happened on the road to Damascus. As Saul got closer to the city, a bright light shone from heaven, blinding him. He dropped to the ground and heard a loud voice coming from the sky. Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? Who are you? I am Jesus, the one you think is wrong. Get up and go to the city. Then you will be told what you need to do next. Saul got up from the ground, but he was blind. He couldn't see anything. He was led to Damascus by his men, but for three full days, he was blind and didn't eat or drink anything. Now in that city, there was a man who followed Jesus. His name was Ananias. He also heard the voice of Jesus. Ananias, go to the house where Saul is. Place your hands on him so he will be able to see again. Ananias was scared because he knew Saul had a bad reputation. He knew Saul hated Christians like him, but the Lord said, Go, Saul is the man I have chosen to share my good news. So Ananias went to the house where Saul was staying. He put his hands on him and prayed for God to restore Saul's sight. Immediately, Saul could see again. He quickly chose to follow Jesus, got baptized, and regained his strength with some food. Saul stayed in that city and began to share God's good news with everyone. People knew he was the man who used to hate God and Christians, but they saw that now he was different. God had transformed him. He was no longer the Saul that didn't believe in Jesus. Now he was Paul, who spent the rest of his life serving God. There is another guy in the story too. His name is Barnabas. Now Barnabas had a choice to make too. Should he also help the man killing followers of Jesus or believe that God really changed Saul's heart? Let's see how it played out. Slapstick Theater. Paul and Barnabas. This is Paul. Rawr who once hated the followers of Jesus and would do anything he could to stop them from telling others about the good news of Jesus. But Paul met Jesus in a miraculous way and his life was changed forever. Wow! He went from hunting down the followers of Jesus to being one of them himself. Yeah, all right! When Paul was in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers there. Oh, I got way up! But they were all afraid of him. Oh, man. They did not believe he had truly become a follower of Jesus. Damn, huh? Follow me. Then a man named Barnabas, 
brought him to the apostles and told them about how Paul had seen the Lord and how the Lord had spoken to Paul. Yeah, that's true. He also told them that Paul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Hey, okay. So Paul stayed in Jerusalem with the followers of Jesus. He told many people about Jesus and they came to follow Jesus too. Paul and Barnabas went to do special work for God. Yeah. They preached the good news about Jesus in many places until they both went separate ways to tell others about Jesus. Now, Saul's life was definitely a drastic story change. Drastic. I think that that is why so many people had trouble believing it at first. Like, how could somebody that was so opposed to Jesus all of a sudden have his life turned around? And Ananias had to face that question. He had to let go, let it go of the fear he had about Paul and trust that God had really changed Saul's life. Barnabas had to do the same. In a moment when everybody was looking for clarity in what to believe, Barnabas stepped up on behalf of Saul and shared what he had seen happening in Saul's life. That took some courage and mm -hmm. it ended up making all of the difference. All of this brings us to our bottom line for today, which is knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. Think about it. God changes Saul's name to Paul, and Paul ended up writing a big portion of the New Testament. That's right, he did. He would spread the good news about Jesus to so many people, and those people would tell people who then would tell people who then would go and keep telling people until it reached us today. Ta-da! But if these guys allowed fear to control them, then they wouldn't have helped Paul out. Mm -mm. And he may have never been able to spread the gospel the way he did. It is easy to let our fear drive our decisions. Like, maybe some of you might be a little scared to start riding your bicycle without training wheels. Or like for me, starting to learn how to use my rollerblades again. But think about what we see in Saul's story. When we understand who God is and just what he is capable of, that can give us the courage in the face of some really difficult situations. Oh, snap. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It's trivia time! Ta-da! Let's see if you were paying attention to today's Bible story or if you were just eating snacks. Oh, snap. Let's see. Well, question number one. After the Lord told Ananias to go find Saul, did Ananias A, turn up the music really loud and pretended that he hadn't heard the Lord speaking? B, pack up quickly, move far away from Damascus and change his name to Clarence? Or C, do what the Lord said and go to the house where Saul was? The answer is C. Although he was scared, he did what the Lord said. Question number two, and Ananias placed his hands on Saul and told him all the terrible things he had done and called him a bunch of names that I can't repeat here. B, put him in a sleeper hold he had learned while watching professional wrestling. Or C, retold the story of what happened on the road and prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, the answer is C. Ta-da! Last question, guys. When Saul tried to join the believers in Jerusalem, they A, received them warmly and were thankful for the amazing work God had done. B, handed him back over to the leaders of Damascus to suffer the consequences. Or C, were all afraid of him and didn't believe he was really a follower of Jesus. Mm. Oh, man. What's the answer, Michael? The answer is C. They didn't receive him. They were terrified and didn't believe he was actually one of Jesus' followers. That was until a man named Barnabas bravely spoke up for him. Well, CF Kids, we couldn't end our time together without stopping and praising God through worship. hey -o. Yeah, we actually have two new worship songs and I cannot wait mm -hmm. to do them together with you, Bruce, and you guys. 
Yep. All right, let's worship. Let's do it.
That last song was so fun, and I really enjoy how it reminds us that we can be part of God's family. So true, Michael. Now, CF Kids, don't forget about your virtual、Ooh. challenge card. Yes. Come on, guys, you can do it. Complete seven out of those fourteen challenges.、Seven. It's just seven. Yeah, and then when you do, you can do one of two things. So you want to make sure that your parents know this. That's right. Well, I hope you got your parents, cause you're gonna need their permission. You can snap a picture and email the picture with your name and address to cfkids at cfmiami.org. Or you can snap a picture and tag us on Instagram at cfkidsmiami. Right there. Hey, oh! And once you do this, we'll send you a mystery, mystery prize. prize. Also, something very exciting is coming up. We are challenging you and your family to a summer splash. Family dance off. Oh yeah! So record you and your family dancing to the song "Love" by We Are Messengers. Then send in those videos two ways. Ooh, your parents can email us the video at cfkids at cfmiami.org, or they can post the video and tag us on Instagram at cfkidsmiami. It seems like they can do the same two things for the virtual challenge card and the video. Yeah. So, That's right. The link for all the info, along with the virtual Father's Day kit and activities that go with it, are at the very end of this video. Got that right. Well, let's close our time in prayer. Yeah. Let's bow our heads. God, thank you so much for this beautiful day you have given us. Thank you for the opportunity to be reminded through our bottom line that by knowing you, you can help us face our fears, God. Whatever that is, from rollerblading to roaches, God, to bigger things like. Questions that we don't have the answers to, Father, and so Father, help us in this week that we have ahead of us, God, for you to just continue to protect us and guide us. God, be with every single family that is、uh, watching us and just、uh, is listening to you, God, and growing with you, Father. We thank you for this time and this opportunity. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, bye, CF kids. See you、bye. next week.